He is popularly called Ghana's gentle giant. He ruled from 2000 to 2008. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we now invite the most revered former president of Ghana for his message. Our beautiful first lady, Mrs. Rebecca Kufado, Your Excellency, the Vice President, the man of the moment, Mahmoudou Baumia, and our second lady, party elders, party members, excellencies of the diplomatic corps, our revered chiefs and queen mothers, and all of the citizens of Ghana watching this program, whether from within these halls or from outside. I have come to bear witness to the candidate who is being inaugurated today. I have always seen him as a man of destiny. When I first saw him, and that was about 2002, he was just a is it research assistant to the governor of the Central Bank, and in far away London. This young man delivered a paper at an international conference of um, giants from the city of London, the financial world, and some very powerful people of government. And immediately he finished his address. He was going to sit down, but there was something in his statement and about him. I was president of Ghana then. <laughs> In fact, till then I hadn't even spoken with him ever before. But, but I sent somebody, I think one of the officers with me, go and call me that young man. He came, I congratulated him, and I don't know what, what came in me. Prophetically, I told him, carry on like that, and you'll go far. Then, 2008, as I was stepping down and the party had chosen president, uh, then candidate Akufuadu, who later became president, somehow Akufuadu picked the same young man to be his running mate. Till then, Baumia was not even in the main stream of party. He was a party man, all right, but behind the scenes. So we picked him. And uh, of course, there were, there were some surprises. People expressed misgivings. I thought of it. And then, at a party meeting in the Aliza Hotel, I remembered my first meeting of, with this young man in London the, and what I told him. Then it dawned on me again to more or less prophesy. I appealed to the party just to accept this man to carry on, man of destiny. Today we've all gathered here to launch him 
as our presidential candidates for 2024 20, elections for president of Ghana. As I said, I come to bear witness that this man, a mission determined by destiny, and please let's all accept him to, to continue. We happen to be living in times where the whole world, the whole world, it's in a flux. Leadership is very, very scarce. Quality leadership. If anybody aspires to be a leader without command of the new technologies, like digitalization, <laughs> And also, without a deep grasp of geopolitics, I tell you, he may be a good man uh, in terms of uh, mastering some of the old disciplines like, say, uh, economics, politics, and all that. But I tell you, very likely he may be found wanting, wanting sooner than later. This young man here, seems to have these uh, instruments under his belt. Digitalization, geopolitics, and additionally, we've seen him uh, perform loyally under President Akufuado, and uh, he's been also in public view since uh, he got selected as the vice presidential candidate in 2008. He's all marked by Humility and the temperance requisite for the job of leading a nation in search of a way forward. Ghana has come to a crossroads, and I'm serious here. It's not the normal, regular politics we want. We want a leadership with a vision, even in the complex world I've talked about. Uh, the leader able to match out the new technologies to pick the requisite manpower. And here, allow me, I'm a party man, soundly, but I tell you, we should be talking about the nation and not so much about the party. You must get people of competence to work with him to find our way out of the confusion our society and economy have been plunged into. I wouldn't blame any side. Look at the track records of all the parties. I tell you, you can't find one that can say that in their time they were excellent or superb. No. We are in a new situation and I believe the saying that come with the, the man is now. Has come for this man And I like the theme that I posted against the wall. Look at behind the lectern there. Bold solutions for the future. Without the preparations I've talked about, understanding the new technologies and knowing and really committed to your nation, to secure a decent and dignified niche in the global context for your nation. That is geopolitics. Without them, I tell you, we will continue to wallow. So, I'm witnessing that I, it seems, look at the field of the arena presidency now. It seems this man, destiny for this time, Ghana, to the whole nation to give him the chance to come. I have a feeling, I have a very strong feeling he is truly the man of the moment and Ghana must accept him. So this is it. Thank you very much. A big round of applause for His Excellency, the former president, 
John Ajekum Kufuo. And that's a handshake of blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, we are almost ready to receive the leader as he delivers his vision statement. Ahead of that though, Ghanaians have been expressing some expectations. We are a leader of our great party. But we still have to mention the many who have joined us today. His Excellency, the former president of Ghana, John Ejekum Kufor, thank you for coming here today. Her Excellency, the beautiful First Lady of the Republic of Ghana, thank you for joining us today. Her Excellency, the awesome, unique, and spiritual Second Lady of Ghana, Hajia Samira Baumia, the wife of our flag bearer, thank you for joining us today. Her Excellency, Honorable Frema Akosia Opare, the Ghana's first female Chief of Staff, thank you for being with us. Members of the National Council and Elders of MPP, our National Chairman, my General Secretary and our General Secretary, former presidential aspirants and new, and of the new patriotic party, former presidential candidates, members of the diplomatic corps, distinguished traditional rulers, revered council of Zongo chiefs and elders, honorable ministers and deputy ministers of state, our religious leaders and members of the Christian Council of Ghana, honorable members of parliament, our parliamentary candidates, Metropolitan, Municipal and District Chief Executives, CEOs and Deputies of all state agencies, past and present leadership of the new Patriotic Party, from our regions and all constituencies, representatives of all... Excellency. In the person of Al Haji, Dr. Mahmoudou. Baumia. Your Excellency, former President, John Ajekun Kufo, the General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party. Justin Kudia Frimpong. All protocols duly observed. I am happy to welcome all of you, those of us gathered in this auditorium and those watching through various media channels to this historic occasion. On the 4th of November, 2023, we made history, the MPP made history by electing His Excellency Dr. Alhaji Mahamudu Baumia as the presidential candidate of the new patriotic party not only is he the fourth presidential candidate of the party in this dispensation, but he's also the first minority candidate. This is a testament to the party's commitment to democracy and inclusivity. By electing Dr. Baumia, we have demonstrated that we are not an exclusivist part, uh, party, but one that values diversity and embraces different perspectives. I commend Dr. Mahmoud Baumia for his exceptional determination and hard work, which has earned him the well-deserved position of the MPP's presidential candidate for 2024. I congratulate him on my behalf as well as on behalf of all the national officers 
most of whom are present here with us. Their continuous support for the party and the democratic process is greatly appreciated. Indeed, our presence here today shows our love for the party and commitment to its values. Thank you for being part of our journey towards a better future. I want to express my sincere appreciation to the party's rank and file for their discipline and hard work in organizing the widely acclaimed, peaceful, and transparent presidential and parliamentary primaries. I commend your efforts, and I expect all parliamentary candidates and party executives to take immediate action by reaching out to all unsuccessful aspirants and form an formidable constituency campaign teams to guarantee our party retains its majority in the 10th parliament. Failure to do so is not an option. It is time to put aside all differences and come together. Let us bridge every gap, heal every wound, and work together with a renewed passion for victory. Remember, when we stand united, we are unstoppable. So, let's join hands and search or march in unity towards a resounding first round victory on December 7th. <laughs> Having said this, it is indeed possible. I don't want to take the wind out of the sail of our flag bearer. So thank you for listening, and I leave the floor. Thank you. I think we could do it better. Another round of applause for our...